Apple is about to kill Microsoft's OpenAI and they won't even need an AI model to do it. Now this probably sounds crazy. After all, OpenAI is the poster child for artificial intelligence and Microsoft invested $10 billion in them. But their plan is flawed for a few reasons. At first, OpenAI seems well positioned. Hundreds of millions of people use ChatGPT and startups are scrambling to build on top of their powerful API. But Apple, as the biggest tech company in the world, has been suspiciously quiet about the biggest technology shift maybe ever. In May, the company posted 28 new AI positions. The machine learning and AI careers page on the Apple website says the work is innovative and the experience is magic. Tim Cook said we see enormous potential in this space to affect virtually everything we do. They are one of the most secretive companies in the world but if we look closely it's pretty obvious what they are doing. This about to be multi-trillion dollar puzzle called the artificial intelligence industry has three main pieces and everyone thinks the game is about having a monopoly on one of them. But one by one, you'll see why Apple doesn't like to participate in any of it. And instead, go after the lifeline of AI to probably own all of it. Both OpenAI and Google seemed on top of the world in the early days. But despite all the hype, there was a ticking time bomb that threatened to derail their ambitions from the very beginning. The core technology of language models like GPT-4 is the transformer architecture that was introduced by Google in 2017. The technology is not a secret. Pretty much anyone who has access to enough computing or equivalent money can replicate it. They still have to have a whole lot of AI scientists alongside incredible engineering to make it work, but that doesn't seem to be a limiting factor. Having competition isn't exactly music to the monopoly seekers ears. But even worse, is when those competitors are all offering the same thing you are. If you ask GPT-4 or any of those other hyped up language models for an omelette recipe, could you even tell which one is which? They'll all give you a pretty decent recipe. Sure, you can stay ahead of the competition for more complex questions, but as these models grow, fewer and fewer questions will be considered complex for them. Until your model will be the same as everybody else's model. Although OpenAI's core strategy is not building a consumer product, it's providing intelligence for other businesses. Maybe if they could get companies to build applications on top of their API, then they could leverage that later on as Apple did with iOS and Google with Android. But unfortunately for them, a language model's API has a uniquely weak grip on its users. If someone has an iOS app, he's not only limited to iOS, perhaps this should be illegal, but he's also also limited to the app store. You don't like the new rules of the marketplace? You can throw your app out of the window. But here is a language model API. It's English in, English out. You can easily replace this API for any equally capable language model at any point. Startups that are building on OpenAI today are not eternally dependent on this language model. While OpenAI is worried about the future, another giant company is facing an even harsher reality. It might seem like Google and OpenAI are in a very close fight for the number one spot in AI but they both have a bigger problem called open source. Especially after Meta released the Llama models. No matter how many times big companies have tried to stop it, open source just spread like wildfire. In fact, there was an internal letter by a researcher at Google titled, we have no moats and neither does OpenAI. The uncomfortable truth is, we aren't positioned to win this arms race and neither is OpenAI. Simply put, open source is lapping us. Their models are faster, more customizable, more private, and pound for pound more capable. They are running language models on a toaster just over a week after the release. We have no secret sauce. And on top of that, Meta just released Llama version 2. More capable models, this time with an open source license meaning it can even be used for commercial purposes. Apple doesn't like this mess. Ruthless competition and a lot of uncertainty around the commercial value and the safety of your position in the market. Microsoft wasn't that naive either. The real value of OpenAI for Microsoft lies not in retail products, but in advancing a vitally important service for them. If OpenAI is not obvious to be the trillion dollar opportunity for Microsoft, Azure in close cooperation with the elite team of AI scientists at OpenAI is. The cloud is more than half of the entire Microsoft's revenue at around a hundred billion the cloud industry is projected to be four times bigger by 2030. That's a multi-trillion dollar opportunity right there. Azure is the second biggest cloud service in the world after AWS. But Google has been strategically tailoring its cloud platform towards machine learning applications with the help of DeepMind. Although they are the smallest of the three big ones, they are considered the best option for AI and machine learning applications, which are destined to eat up a huge chunk of the cloud industry. Every AI software not only needs the cloud for training, but they also need constant computation service for inference, a very volatile usage that is just unreasonably expensive if you can't efficiently and dynamically adopt the resources with the help of the cloud software. Also cloud is Microsoft's safest bet because it has a very large barrier to entry and if people start building on top of their stack 
they are going to have a hard time moving somewhere else later down the line. Especially when you consider almost 80% of the Fortune 500 companies are Azure customers, including the Apple itself. But Apple is not participating in the cloud either, because they have an even bigger vision in mind. That started three years ago in November of 2020 with the introduction of the Apple Silicon. Let me demonstrate it for you. If I open Photoshop and I say, give me a river here and some clouds and maybe a mountain, this is a beta software. Look at this lighting and realism. If I'm able to do all this just by asking, why the hell do I need this hideously complicated dashboard and a mouse and a keyboard? If my computer cuts all the scenes automatically in Premiere Pro, understands how to do lighting, if I don't need to write a line of code by hand, if the device clearly understands what I'm saying and talks back to me in natural voice, if the machine is intelligent enough to interact with me like an employee that understands computers better than me, then what the device that truly utilizes the power of AI would look like. Hello, I'm here. A device that feels like your own personal assistant, understanding you perfectly and making complex computer tasks easy and natural. We are only a few years away from this kind of seamless AI experience. And that's what Apple is competing for. And it only makes sense when we look at the next piece. Business people call this the blue ocean for chip designers and manufacturers. Everything everyone we've mentioned so far is planning to do relies on this silicon. Competition here is virtually non-existent. Nvidia is the king of design and then AMD exists too. We could even argue the AI boom was more of a computation brute force with the incredible performance of Nvidia A100 GPUs and Google TPUs than it was a software or scientific leap. As a result, Nvidia blew up in valuation taking over Meta and Tesla with over a trillion dollar valuation making them the sixth largest company in the world by market cap. But there is also Apple with the M series. We could say Apple is trying to enter this incredibly profitable, safe and almost no competition market with M chips. But Apple doesn't sell chips to anyone. Then out of all the opportunities so far, why is Apple so interested in designing their own chips? There is a global trend towards spending more time on smaller and more convenient devices. But there is just not enough flexibility on a device without a mouse and a keyboard. Apple is not fighting for the market share in any of those places because they are strategically filling the gaps to make the dream device possible. All the chips in the M series come with a dedicated neural engine to run AI on the device. Out of all the shiny AI startups that Apple could easily afford, who did they go after? A little company called Xnor AI. Never heard of them? Well, they specialize in something pretty important. Running AI stuff smoothly on phones, laptops, and other consumer devices. Not the big powerful service companies like Google have, but the gadgets in your pocket. It might come just as a slow slope of adding more and more capabilities to iOS and iMac, or it might come as a huge software update or an even entirely new device, but it is coming. And the device is the lifeline of AI, more important than anything else. Nvidia as the king and essentially one of the greatest beneficiaries of the AI trend had a total revenue of $26 billion with an impressive $17 billion in profit in 2022. Apple, they got a $20 billion check from Google just to keep them as the default search engine on Safari. Apple has maneuvered itself into the perfect position. Who else has a laptop as powerful as a high-end desktop that doesn't even need a fan? If anyone is going to rethink how people are going to interact with computing again, this time in the age of AI, it's gotta be them. As much as Apple's AI strategy is impressive, I think Apple's strategy to persuade people to buy their products using sounds is the coolest thing I've ever researched about them. If you are curious, watch this next one.